Number 16. A freight train consists of two 8 times 10 to the 5 kilogram engines and 45 cars with average masses of 5.5 times 10 to the 5 kilograms. What force must each uh, engine exert backward on the track to accelerate the train at a rate of 5 times 10 to the minus 2 meters per second squared if the force of friction is 7.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons, assuming the engines exert identical forces? So some of you may be thinking this question sounds familiar. It does. It's basically identical to question, I think it's 27 in chapter 4. The only difference is they used uh, to the powers 4 and 4 here. So, uh, yeah, let's redo the question. All right. So uh, basically what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find right the force that each engine must exert on the track. Uh, so that's basically equal to the applied force, right? Because whatever force the engines exert backward on the track is equal but opposite to the force that the track exerts on the uh, engines, right? Newton's third law. So very simply, uh, let's just start plugging in values into our, our little... Uh, free body diagram here. So this point will represent the entirety of the entire train system, okay? So there is some, uh, excuse me, some applied force, applied force, not a force, <laughs> applied force um, being pointed in the positive, I'll call it X direction, all right? And then there is also some frictional force opposing that motion, and they very kindly tell us what it is. All right, so the force of friction here is gonna be equal to 7.50 times 10 to the 5, right? Newtons. Okay, so what I'm simply going to do here is I'm going to calculate the overall applied force, the total applied force, all right, for the entire train system. And then what I can do is just divide the answer by 2 to find the forces produced by each end in, engine, excuse me, uh, individually, all right? So I got some of the forces in the x direction is equal to mAx. So I got Fa, right, minus the force of friction is equal to mAx. Start plugging some stuff in. I'm looking for the applied force minus the frictional force of 7.50 times 10 to the 5. Okay, what's the mass of the overall system? Well, we got 45 uh, cars with uh, each have a mass of 5.5 times 10 to the 5. So just do uh, 45 times 5.5 times 10 to the 5. That's a big number. So we get uh, 2.48, uh, 2.48 times 10 raised to the, we got 3, 6, 7. All right, I got 10 to the 7th here, plus then, right, the two engines. So take 2 and multiply that by 8 times 10 to the 5th. Oh, hold on, uh, 2, sorry, sorry, 8 uh, times 10 to the 5th times 2. So we get 1.6, right? So we have 1.6 times 10 to the uh, sixth, it looks like. And that's all multiplied by the acceleration. So simply just divide out this sum. I'm just gonna sum it so I don't have to keep writing the two values. 2.48 times 10 to the seven plus 1.6 times 10 to the six. So we get a value of right 2.64 times 10 to the seventh. Divide out both sides by that. Actually, wait a minute. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Why am I doing? Why am I doing that? We know the acceleration, right? What? Am I <laughs> uh, just seeing if you guys are paying attention again, right? Uh, the acceleration there is in the problem. It's five point zero zero times ten to the minus two. All right. So simply, we'll add this term on over to the left hand side, right? And when we do that, we get the applied force is going to equal. So when I add the two point Four eight times ten to the seven plus one point six times ten to the six. I get two point six four times ten to the seven. Take that value, multiply it by five times ten to the negative two, and then add to that value seven point five times ten to the five. So two point oh seven. So two point oh seven times ten raised to the. What do we got here? Three six right times ten to the sixth, and that is in newtons. Okay. Um, so this is now the total applied force, all right. Um, remember that I want to find it for each engine, and there are two engines, so therefore this total force must be divided by 2, all right. And now when I divide that answer by 2, we get a value of, considering sig figs, it's going to be 1.04 times 10 to the 6 newtons. That would be for each engine. Okay, so that would be the answer for letter A. 
And now let's take a look at uh, part B. So let's read, it says, what is the magnitude of the force in the coupling between the 37th and 38th cars? All right, so uh, let's just try to detail a quick picture here. Whoops, let's just detail a quick picture. So here's letter B. So I'm gonna represent this as two points, okay, or two parts. Here's, this part will represent cars, let's see, between the 37th, Okay, so this will be car, let's say, 38, okay, and here now will be car number uh, 37, okay, uh, but what I'm going to do here is not only talk about 38 and 37, but what I'm going to do is, remember, there'll be 39 out here, 40, 41, etc., and there would also be then uh, 36, 35, 34, all the way down to the two engines, okay, so I'm going to consider each of, uh, consider each side separately, so what I mean by that is I'm going to take uh, all the engines here, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, because there's 45 cars in total. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a total weight. So basically I'm bringing this whole part of the system, okay, into a single point, let's call it. And I'll draw that on my axis and that will represent this point right in the middle. All right. So now, what are the forces acting on um, this particular point? Well, we have to think about it. Um, it says that, let's see, it says that the uh, total force of friction, right, going back to the problem, the total force of friction is 7.5 times 10 to the 5 newtons. Let's assume that that is equally distributed um, over every, I think it says that, right? Yeah, it says this over here, right? It says the friction is evenly distributed among all the cars and engines. So what I want to do is, in order to find the friction on, you know, this part of my system, uh, I am going to take then 7.50, 7.50 times 10 to the fifth, and I'm going to multiply that then by how many cars I have here. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to multiply that by eight and then divide it by the total amount of cars and engines, which would be 47 because there are 45 cars and two engines. All right. So when I do that, let me just move this math and move it on over here. All right, when I do that, what's the value? Well, 7.5 times 10 to the fifth times eight over 47. We had a value of um, uh, 1.28. So one, oops, we had a value of 1.28 times 10 to the five, times 10 to the five Newtons. Okay, now that vector is the frictional vector. So that's going to be pointing backwards. Why? Because I'm assuming I have an acceleration going forwards. All right, and that's just the direction. And remember, the acceleration of this will be the same for these group of cars. It's 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, the frictional force here for this set of cars will be equal to uh, 1.28 times 10 to the 5. All right, Newtons. And now, if we think about it, the only other force here is now the force of pull, right? Or the tensional force, the force in the coupling, okay, I'll call it the tensional force. The tensional force that is now being exerted on cars number 38 through 45 by car number 37 through 1 and the two engines, all right, so this is really what I'm solving for. This is one particular method. There is a second method that you can set up both of these systems with two coordinates and whatever. You can, by all means, do it that way. I've done a couple of videos like that in the prior check. You can feel free to check that out, but I'm taking the shorter way here. So uh, now what we can do is now we can finally set up our sum of the forces in the x direction formula is equal to max. All right, so now, again, remember, my system is just the system I starred here, okay? So I have the tensional force minus the frictional force, right? Equals the mass, remember, which is really eight cars, okay? I counted them before. So it's really going to be eight times the average mass multiplied then by the acceleration, which we know it to be this value. So let's just plug it all in. So T minus 1.28 times 10 to the 5 will equal eight times the average mass of 5 0.5 times 10 to the 5 kilograms multiplied by the acceleration of 5.00 times 10 to the minus 2. And now to solve for T, right, we would just add 
this term on over to this side and I get my answer of tension being equal to, let's see, it is 8 times 5.5 times 10 to the 5 times 5 times 10 to the minus 2 and add on over 1.28, 1.28 times 10 to the 5. Okay, I'm just going to check, make sure I plug that all in right. And it looks like I did. Uh, yeah, so we're good. Okay, so it comes out to 3.48 times 10 raised to the 3, 4, 5. 5 newtons. That is now the tension in the coupling. All right. It might be interesting. Go back if you'd like. Compare this now to question 27 in chapter 4. The only thing, like I told you at the beginning of the video, that had changed is just the magnitudes of the uh, the masses of the engines and the cars, right? And compare then the tensional force between car 38 and 37 and the uh, applied force uh, by the two engines and see if you can make it all uh, kind of connect together and, and the reasons why the numbers are the way they are. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really hope this helped. Please do remember to subscribe. That would mean a lot to me. I'll see you in the next lesson.